Oh, I really thought Mom had a ton of money saved up. I told you, didn't I? Kick her out already. What's the point of letting the jobless parasite stay here? I've been living here for three months, and my son and his wife drained my savings. They treated me like a mate. I was done with it all, so I left quietly. Just then, my son called me. Mom, what's going on? Tony sounded frantic on the phone. Around that time, something I did had become headline news across the United States. I'm Sarah, and I am 70 years old. I've been living in France for several years, but my health took a turn for the worse, so I came back to the States. My old apartment was gone, so I reached out to my son and his wife to see if I could stay with them for a while. Tony, my only son, is 44 and works as an office employee. He and his wife, Alice, don't have kids and they seem to live quietly. We lost touch while I was away, but I decided to reconnect, and Tony seemed glad to hear from me. I explained my situation and asked if I could stay for a while. Tony reluctantly agreed. It was awkward to impose on them, but the joint joy of seeing my family again overcame my hesitations with a mix of nervousness and happiness. I took a taxi from the airport to their house. When I arrived, Tony and Alice greeted me at the entrance. While Tony looked happy, Alice was visibly unhappy. I plan to stay here for a few months. My belongings will be delivered later. I dropped off my carry-on bag and went to the living room. We chatted about our daily lives, jobs, and my recent life in France. When Tony asked why I had moved to France, I just said, I'm getting old and wanted to enjoy the French countryside. Tony laughed, but Alice remained unhappy. Then we discussed my health issues. I've been having severe dizziness and was told it might be Miner's disease. After a conversation, I went back to the entrance to grab my belongings from my carry-on. As I was organizing my stuff in the hallway, I overheard Tony and Alice's conversation. Tony, are you serious about letting Sarah stay? I don't want to live with an old woman. Come on, she's my mom. You also work part-time, so it's not like you'll always be around. Yeah, but what about our days off? How long is she planning to stay? I want her gone. Don't talk like that. Mom will eventually leave. We can discuss finances tomorrow. Just keep it down, she might hear you. She can't hear us, she's old. Age brings sharp ears for insults. And there I was, eavesdropping on the conversation in the cold hallway. I feel bad for imposing on Tony and his wife so suddenly. I'm sure it's a big inconvenience for them, but you know, I'm really happy to be spending time with Tony and his wife after all these years apart. When Tony was young, I raised him as a single mom after losing my husband. We didn't have much and Tony had his share of hardships, dealing with illness and all. This isn't making up for that, but I wanted to come here to share my apologies and gratitude. That's why I came to this house. It's a shame I'm not welcomed, but they've got their own lives to live. I went to the guest room they gave me, trying to settle my anxious heart. The next morning, Tony left for work, and it was just Alice and me. While I was doing some crafting in the living room, Alice stood before me. Hey, Sarah, can you not make such a mess? Looking around, I noticed fabric scraps and threads scattered about. Oh, I'm sorry, I'll clean it up. Do you know what this is? I showed her the small pouch I was sewing with a little green turtle design on it. This is a turtle pouch. I love turtles, so I make little turtle-themed crafts. It even has a zipper on its shell, too. That's nice, but Sarah, you can't just hang around here all day. At least go somewhere else when I'm off from my part-time job. You're in the way. But, but I get dizzy if I go outside too much. I'll drive you to the nearby community center to stay there during the day. I have things to do at home, Alice said without room for discussion, and continued, also help with the chores while you're here. You're not just lounging around. It's the least you can do since we're letting you stay. Don't do crafts. Do some cleaning and laundry. Stunned, I finally said, all right then, and slowly got up. From then on, I ended up doing all the housework, though dizzy and sore. 
I took on the chores, and Alice and Tommy treated me like a housekeeper. Deeper, Alice seemed addicted to social media, constantly on her phone. It looked like she hadn't been keeping up with the housework before I came. Mom, did you bring your banking card? When Tony got home, he talked to me with a smile. I don't mind you living with us, but life costs money. Could you chip in? I looked at Tony over my reading glasses, nodded, and stood up. I pulled the banking card from my handmade pouch and handed it to Tony. He checked it quickly, and his face tightened. Wait, Mom, is this all you have saved? Any other accounts? That's all I have. I don't need much at my age. No chronic illnesses or anything, I said, smiling. As the conversation continued, Tony's expression darkened. Man, this is not enough money. Not even $10,000. You said you were living large abroad, so I assumed. Tony kept pestering me, asking if I had any more money. When I said no, he sighed and slumped his shoulders. Fine, I'll hang on to this cash for now. I'm doing you a favor letting you live here, so this is the least you could do. After getting my account password, Tony grabbed my bank and debit cards and left the room. That night, lying in bed, I could hear Tony tubbing through the wall that separated our rooms. Oh, this is a letdown. I totally thought Mom was loaded. Our household is actually in the red. Shouldn't have said she could stay. I told you, kick her out already. That jobless moocher brings us no benefits whatsoever. The two of them seemed confident. I couldn't hear them talking freely in the next room, or maybe they wanted me to hear them. In my cold bed, I was holding back tears of loneliness and sorrow. The next day, since Alice had a day off, she drove me to the local community center. I opened my cargo bag to continue my handiwork in the lounge area, but realized I had left the essential fabric at home. I hesitated, but I couldn't ask Alice to go back and get it. Fortunately, my dizziness was under control today. I knew this area, so I decided to take a walk home to get the fabric. Finally arriving, I glanced through the window into the house. Alice and an unfamiliar man were there. At first, I thought he was a visitor, but they seemed intimately close. I hesitated outside for a while, then turned back without entering the house. So that's why they wanted me out, so I wouldn't interrupt the affair. Back at the community center, I kept thinking about Alice and that man and decided to call someone for advice. From then on, I avoided bringing up the man and continued interacting with Tony and his wife. However, whenever I left the house, I would conspicuously place a red turtle pouch at the edge of the living room side table. Three months had passed since I started staying with Tony's family. By this point, I had essentially become the household's maid. When I was at home, I had to do endless chores, and when Alice was home, I was relegated to the community center. My savings had mostly been drained by Tony, a man with a gambling addiction who spent most of his free time on lotteries and slots. It seemed his fixation on money stemmed from the financial hardships he suffered as a child. I initially tried to intervene, but eventually, mentioning it always enraged him. Three months in and I couldn't take it anymore. One night before a long weekend, I decided to bring something I'd been considering. Tony, Alice, thank you for letting me stay with you. Tony, I know I made things hard for you when you were young by not having much money. I'm sorry for all the trouble I've caused, but I'm grateful. I pulled out a homemade turtle pouch from the table. It was green with a zipper on the shell. This is a token of my gratitude to both of you. I hope you'll accept it. Contrary to my expectations, neither Tony nor Alice showed any interest in my handmade pouch. Mom, enough of that. Are we really out of money? Think about the French account or something. Tony, I told you we are out of money. Look, I work really hard on this. Can you just take it as a token of my love? Remember how happy you were when you were little and I would fill the shell with candy and some pocket money. Tony starts to get increasingly irritated. I'm not a kid anymore. I'm not happy receiving something like this. Sarah, how much longer are you planning to mooch off us? Honestly, it's annoying. Tony and his wife give me a cold look. Desperate, I asked Tony, do you remember Joe? 
He helped us out in that old apartment we lived in. What? I don't remember. Stop bringing up old stories. Are we done? Stunned into silence, I clenched the turtle pouch in my hand and felt the texture of the paper inside. The next day, Tony and his wife go on vacation, leaving me behind. I had planned to leave the house after yesterday's conversation, so I quickly packed my bags with the arranged carrier and sent them off to my home in France. I also didn't forget to put the red turtle pouch into my carry-on bag. I left a simple note of thanks and goodbye on the table and left the house where I had been staying for three months. After that, I didn't return home immediately. Instead, I stayed in a U.S. hotel for a while. I had things to do, and I thought Tony and his wife would contact me eventually. Sure enough, about two weeks later, Tony calls. Mom, what's going on? The turtle pouch? It's yours, isn't it? From his words, Tony screams over the phone. Ah, you noticed. I wasn't surprised when I saw the news on the TV. The turtle-shaped pouch I had planned to give to Tony and his wife. Inside it was a check for $1 million. It was my way of saying thanks for all they've done and to apologize for all the trouble I caused as a kid. People might find it shallow to atone with money, but I had dreamed of the day I could give it to them, saving up bit by bit over 40 years. I did some digging before meeting Tony after a long time and found out he was in debt. He had tried to pay off gambling debts with more gambling, only to find himself sinking deeper. He had a steady job. I just wanted him to clear his debts and leave peacefully, but they refused to accept my gesture. They had completely forgotten about the kindness they had shown to my family and me, so I decided to divide the million-dollar check into smaller sums and donate it to charities and welfare organizations across America. I placed the donations in that handmade turtle pouch and sent it anonymously. The turtle pouch became a sensation, making headlines and trending on social media. Alice, isn't that the turtle pouch Mom made? So that means you were going to give us one filled with money, too. Yes, exactly. That was my way of saying thank you and I'm sorry. I've been crafting both the pouch and saving the money to give to you. Well, you could have said that. We would have taken it. If you didn't want my feelings, then you don't need my money either. Tony was yelling on the phone, completely unhinged. It's my money. How dare you deceive me? Give it back. I couldn't listen anymore and pulled the phone away from my ear. After a moment, I spoke. All right, calm down. You're giving me a headache. There's one more turtle, and if you really want it, it's yours. Tony finally settled down and reiterated his desire for the turtle. We agreed to meet later at a cafe. On that day, I took the last red turtle in an envelope to our meeting spot. Tony and his wife were already there and demanded the money before I even sat down. When I silently pulled out the red turtle, Tony snatched it immediately, unzipping its shell. Inside was not a check, but a small electronic device. What the heck is this? Confused, Tony fiddled with the device. He found a tiny button and pressed it. A voice began to play and Alice, standing next to Tony, immediately changed color. Sitting next to Tony, Alice's expression changed when she heard a voice recording. It was Alice's voice, talking warmly with another man that wasn't Tony. What is this? Why? What's happening? Alice seemed to finally realize that it was a recording of her having an affair at home. She tried to snatch the recorder from Tony's hand, but Tony didn't let go. While they grappled, I opened the envelope I brought and laid out several pictures on the table, photos of Alice cheating with another man at home. Presented with irrefutable evidence, Alice was flustered and kept asking, why, why? Tony picked up the photos one by one, examining them intently. Since I came to your house, something seemed off. A friend told me I could hire someone to find out and even offered to cover the costs. What's your problem? Why would you do this? Well, you're my son's wife. It's sad to think family is deceiving each other. You'll understand when you're older, I guess. Fate brought me here to discover your infidelity, Alice. Have you been lying to me all along? Since when, Tony? 
You've got your own secrets, too. If you're blaming her for cheating, you need to fess up as well. I've never cheated. What about your debt? Tony fell silent, and now it was Alice's turn to speak. What about you wasting all your money on gambling? I only use the money I earn, and you have your part-time job, so you should have some money. Listening to their squabble, it was clear this couple had somehow managed to keep it together until now. Neither of you has any money. Tony, you're $40,000 in debt. Alice, you've been giving all your earnings to your affair partner. I had the investigator check your finances, too. Both Tony and Alice were shocked, and they began shouting at each other. I was floored when I first heard the investigation results. This couple was on the brink of bankruptcy. Look, we can pay back the debt if we get Mum's money, so give it to us now. I donated all the money. The only thing left is this red turtle figurine. You blew through my savings on gambling, remember? What? You're kidding me. All of it. In rage, Tony lunged at me across the table. Other customers started to pay attention, and the staff hurried over. The one million dollars is mine. It was supposed to be mine. Give it back. Soon, the police had to be called to restrain Tony. After the police talked some sense into him, they kindly escorted me back to my hotel due to my concerns about Tony's aggressive behavior. A week later, Tony and Alice's relationship had deteriorated beyond repair due to the affair and debt. They got divorced. Tony, now single, got even more consumed with gambling and debt. He was caught trying to embezzle company funds and was fired. To make matters worse, his outburst at the cafe was captured on video and spread on social media, making it difficult for him to find another job. Unable to bear the shame, Tony cut off all contact and disappeared. After the divorce, Alice had no one to rely on and moved into an old public housing unit, living alone. Just before I could make a donation for the turtle rescue, it appears my online post mocking my own turtle went viral. Alice started facing harassment and stalking, which eventually spread to her part-time job and got her fired. Even the man she was having an affair with grew tired of her and left. Now, without any income, she's living on temporary assistance for needy families. After that, I returned to my home in France. Once I finished unpacking in my apartment, I changed into a dress with practice ease. As I was reviewing some work documents, I heard a noise at the entrance. It seemed Joe, my cohabitant, had returned home. Hey, Madam President, welcome back. How was your trip to America? After so long, Joe came over with a smile, setting down his coat and bags. Joe is 75 years old. He was a resident in the same apartment complex where my son Tony and I lived years ago. Back then, I was struggling with poverty, having lost my husband and caring for a young asthmatic Tony. We had no utilities and with no one to turn to, I was desperate and considered ending it all. It was Joe and his wife, our upstairs neighbors, who saved us. They were our lifelines. Please call me Sarah. I'm back and look, I brought so many souvenirs. Wow, all my favorites. Thanks. I'll take some to the storytelling event at the community center tomorrow. Joe examined each of the piled up souvenirs on the table, his face beaming. After we had gotten back on our feet, Joe and his wife moved away for work. Years later, we bumped into each other in the city, and I began helping with a support program for the needy that Joe had founded. Joe's wife had passed away by then, and we started working together as business and life partners. I've been leading the organization since Joe retired a few years ago. What started as a small operation by Joe and his wife has grown into a large-scale international organization over the past 30 years. Currently, we're focusing on supporting single moms in raising children. We moved to France a few years ago to study their advanced support systems. Although we've become quite known in France, we're still not widely recognized in America. I plan to expand our activities there soon and wanted to spend time with Tony and his family as just a mom before they found out about my work. In the end, I couldn't get them to understand how I felt, but that's their choice. Even if it was for a brief moment, 
I was happy to spend time as a family. I am now 70 years old, but it's just 70. There's still much I want and need to do. I straightened my back in my dress and began thinking about my international speech for tomorrow.